faith, fears, love, doubt, surrender, trust. And what the heck is the purpose of it all? Anyways, this we discuss in these videos, elaborating on the nature of the times. It is another broadcast under the full moon itself. Wednesday the 30th, we have a Pisces full moon conjoined the planet Saturn. Now, the mechanics of any full moon is the sun is on the opposite side of the moon with the earth in between. That sun illuminates the full moon by sign, by house, by planetary aspect, that full moon illuminates. And so this is the first Pisces full moon conjoined Saturn. And the fact that Saturn is also opposite to the sun with the earth in between, this is the point of the year where Saturn is closest to the earth. So this full moon is illuminating Saturn in Pisces. We're having all these themes to do with Saturn in Pisces. That is why this full moon is particularly highlighted and special. We'll break that down and then we'll discuss some of the astrology leading us into the first half of September 2023. Now, Saturn's going to remain in Pisces through 2025. So this is a significant cycle. Wherever Saturn is, there's work, there's focus, there's a serious and sobering element to Saturn. Meanwhile, the full moon in Pisces illuminates the most enigmatic, mysterious, spiritual, romantic sign of the zodiac, Pisces. No doubt Pisces is the most mysterious sign. We could talk about it forever and still just barely hold on to anything. This is the nature of Pisces boundarylessness, essence, purpose, meaning. Now, Saturn is the planet of limitation. Saturn is the planet that causes us to doubt, tests our faith, most especially while transiting the sign of Pisces. And we really need to embrace Saturn as not a bad guy, but it's very easy to make Saturn into a bad guy. We could say that doubt is the antithesis of faith, so therefore we need to eliminate all of doubt. And I would say this is a very self-defeating approach, especially to Saturn and Pisces, because it is the face of doubt, that which tests our faith which actually causes our faith to grow. So Saturn is this testing through limitation and challenges that provokes growth in a way that would otherwise be impossible. There are things to mature through. There are trials. There are hurdles. There are obstacles. And I like to give the analogy for Saturn being like the mean high school teacher. We can't stand him. He flunks us the whole damn year. We have to put in so many hours to study and finally pass that class. And we're leaving the final exam classroom on the last day of school. That mean Saturnarian teacher gives us a funny look with a twinkle in his eye that says something like, don't you know I did all of this for you? I put all these obstacles in your path. I made you pass all these challenging exams, jump through one hoop to the next, and now you can go out into the world and be unfazed. It's not exactly a big deal when life throws you challenges now that you have been prepared for the challenges of life. Saturn in Pisces is challenging us to build a meaningful life. Pisces is that be all end all goal that interconnects everything together through a sense of meaning or purpose. We tune to this overall sense of meaning or purpose by forming a connection to something bigger than just ourself. That is what the whole orientation of spirituality is, right? We're not just one person, you know, riding the gravy train. We live on a planet with so many other people and we share an interconnection with those people. And when we experience heartbreak and pain and then we see other people in heartbreak and pain, we feel that same heartbreak and pain in our heart. And that pushes us to act compassionately. So Pisces is this ultimate fulfillment comes from what is really spiritual sacrifice, not the same as how we usually word sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifice means we're aligning to that greater whole. 
We're no longer limiting ourselves to just ourselves, and therefore the most compassionate, empathic person in the room is not satisfied until everyone else also has their needs taken care of. Pisces is boundarylessness. We all melt into the soup of life, that which we are, essence. Pisces is the raw elements. The ruler of Pisces, Neptune, is responsible for all of these natural occurrences, cyclones, tidal waves, earthquakes, raw, natural essence, the forces of nature that turns us back to nature. This chaos, this confusion, this dissolving, this not being able to hold in our hands is a Pisces-Neptune phenomenon. It is at its most complex, fascinating, enigmatic when we bring in the function of Saturn. Why is this? Because Saturn's almost the exact opposite function. Neptune Pisces dissolves, merges, we're all one, returning to the essence of all life, the Alpha and Omega simultaneously, inconceivable, beyond rationality. Saturn and Pisces can be this yearning and hopefulness to build, to dream, this meaningful life, to turn our fantasies, Pisces, into reality, Saturn, as much as Saturn can be testing those realities. Is it real or is it not real? And what work do we have to do to make those dreams a reality? Is this simply a positive manifestation? You think the right things and then they fall into your lap type of reality. Saturn is the planet that teaches us it is not that way. It is not that simple. And there are very real limitations that we're all living within, such as bodies, such as form, and such as 3D time. This principle of 3D time becomes most enigmatic Saturn transiting the sign of Pisces. Why is that? Because time is not just one thing or the other. I hear so many people, you know, linear time is not real. And you know, we can dimensional hop and go into different multiverses. That's true. Aquarius Uranian function, Neptune function. We can tune into the reality of love, timeless. That's true. And there is also 3D linear time. These do not contradict one another. You see, linear time spirals around and what we see as a beginning and an end is actually a part of a spiral. So there's no incongruency between Uranian time, Saturnarian time. And this is something I don't actually see a whole lot of people holding, maybe because it's true mastery once we have all of these things integrated and in balance. So Saturn and Pisces invites us to contemplate these things. You know, it's like, is this dream or fantasy falling into 3D place. What do we need? Do we have the parts and pieces together? My goodness, when we talk about Mercury retrograde and Virgo, this has been the parts and pieces Mercury retrograde, right? It's like, you know, how do we refine this? And what, how do we change this recipe? And is this really working? Probably not. It's probably a little bit off. So let's make this adjustment. Let's break this apart. Let's X that one off and try it a different way. This Mercury retrograde is the parts and pieces, rearrangement, fix it. It falls apart. It's not working. It needs to be redesigned. So that's taking place. While this full moon joined with Saturn is taking us into this profoundly deep existential reflection of what's true, what's not true, what is meaningful, what is love, what is the purpose of it all. It is an exploration of faith and doubt. And again, let's not demonize either end of the pole. They require one another. The tester of faith strengthens faith. And if we get overly absorbed in our faith, we lose our bearing. We need to have our faith periodically tested. Hopefulness, trust. How much do we simply hope you know, when is hope a useful, inspiring inner flame? When is that a misleading delusion? All of this is being evaluated, not just now, but the forthcoming years of Saturn transiting Pisces. And there is this bridging of Pisces, the unseen, dreamt essence into structure and form, Saturn. These are, again, opposite forces. Saturn restricts, creates form, limits things in the time, Pisces dissolves. So this whole Saturn transit can have this type of 
you know, mechanism of, you know, it's like a potter at the wheel. We build it up. We melt it down a little bit. That part's not that right. We'll build this part up this way. That's off a little bit. We'll build it up this way. It's like watching ocean waves in a very cold place where those waves crash forward and then the water freezes. And then part of the water moves back and then there's a crash forward and part of the water freezes and then there moves back and it creates these really fascinating ice salt structures. And that's what's happening in this very energetic, ethereal, very behind the scenes way. Each and every one of us right now is working this mechanic of build, unbuild, create it, let it fall apart, dream it, let, let it go. This is the real magic, right? For those who are into magic, you don't just uh, do the overly forceful and useless, again, positive manifestation. I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. As if that is going to make you happy. The real magic is you sow a seed. You do it at the right time, if you know astrology. The astrology already tells you what to sow the seed for, the intention. Everything's so clear and cohesive. It's absolutely unbelievable when you actually get into real astrology. But you sow a seed and then you forget about it. You lock something and then you throw away the key. And the forgetting and the letting go is absolutely essential in the magical process. You don't, I'm going to manifest this and hold on to this. Ah! No, I'm going to manifest this and then we pop that into our unconscious. This is real psychology too. This isn't just woo-woo. This is uh, hypnotherapy. It is more effective to speak and affect the unconscious than the conscious mind. So this stupid positive manifestation is again, I am happy, I am happy, I am happy. It, it, it doesn't work. It's fake. It's usually full of, uh, you know, delusion and people forcing emotions and it gets disastrous when we do it that way. So, you know, this is really a secret of, of all of life itself is that we sow a seed and we open to potential. We allow the universe to show us more than we can even understand the best way of doing things. And this is how the unconscious works too. It's like, does a baseball batter hyperanalyze how fast the ball is going to come and what degree they're going to swing the bat? It happens instinctually. It comes from the unconscious. The unconscious knows more than we do. The really deep emotions, feelings, instinctual responses. Uh, as spiritual souls, what we're really doing is evolving our consciousness to integrate all of our parts. That is what Pisces is. It is the whole. It's the integration of all the parts and pieces. We can make that as sparkly or as pragmatic as we frame it to be, but that is simply what it is. So this is such a full moon. There's something we probably want to hold on to that we're actually being asked to loosen our grip on. And that can bring up all of the fears, the insecurities and doubts, does it not? And facing all those fears, insecurities and doubts tests our faith, but also causes it to grow. We have to sow a seed and trust that that seed will become what it's meant to be. We don't force a seed to become a beautiful rose. So that's the metaphor for Saturn and Pisces. Pisces is an uncontrollable unfolding period. And that ends up being the totality of life itself, an uncontrollable unfolding, which by the way, never ends. It's always unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. If we were to see life for it as it actually is from God's eye, it is this beautiful fractal rose. Everything is a rose, a plant. It's unfolding, 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 and increasing beauty and love eternally, forever. Out, 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 more, 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 in, 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 out, in, out, in, simultaneously, a giant funnel, the music of life, the sound of the spheres, the trumpeting of angels, this entire creation is a giant whirlwind, a fractal, in, out, God extending in all directions, out, and then back in, out, in, out, in. So there is a divine dance, there is a secret flow, there is a secret harmony. How do we tune into that? By grabbing on? We let go, we surrender, and thereby become possessed. Our hair loosens, our hair runs free, runs wild, our limbs loosen, our limbs move free, move free, move wild. And that's how we begin to channel 
that divine flow. That's how artists and musicians become inspired, to be in the spiral, to be in spirit, is to let go of all control and become possessed by that trumpeting of angels that just flows through us easily and effortlessly. So Saturn in Pisces is this ultimate test. Can we hold with a loose grip? Can we pack that seed in the earth with enough space and air that it can unfold at its own natural rate, at its own natural flow? And those roots are going to grow in a particular way, and those leaves are going to grow in a particular way, but it's not imprisoned in a steel box. Where is there sunlight? Where is there water? That plant is going to unfold easily, effortlessly, and automatically by honoring its own ingrained process, what it's designed to be. The seed contains it all. The seed is the fractal. We don't force the fractal to become its potential. We hold the fractal. We honor the fractal. We observe the fractal. We send our love into the fractal. We pour fertilizer, sunshine, and water into the fractal and watch how that increases this unfolding beauty. So just like springtime flowers, if we try to open this flower prematurely, we increase the propensity for that flower to fall apart in between our fingers. This is the analogy for the feminine, right? Have you ever dealt with a woman before? I know it's like a 90% women demographic, so it's kind of a moot question. <laughs> But this is the feminine, right? You try to force it to do anything, and it's going to backfire. It's going to fall apart. It's not respecting nature. We would like to control nature. Saturn in Pisces certainly brings that up, and we end up losing control when we attempt to control it. We gain better control when we allow nature its own natural process. This is much easier said than done. As much as I speak my heart, honor, and love the Divine Feminine, oh my God, can the Divine Feminine be fucking challenging? What, I'm just going to take a trust fall off of a cliff and just whatever happens in that moment happens and, and you know that's really going to work out? This is the other side of Saturn and Pisces, is it's not just all one way or the other. There is the relaxing, opening our hands, allowing the flower to unfold, and then there is also needing to take some degree of control to build in our life our dreams, to make them real. If we just threw ourselves to the whims of whatever or whoever is around us, we become absorbed and merge Pisces with them. The North Node's transiting Aries the next year. It's certainly not about this dissolving and losing of self. It's about what do you want to do? What do you want to create? What do you want to share? So there's this magic of Pisces. The individual expression, it's an illusion that we feel it's separate because if we honor that individual expression, I'm going to paint, I'm going to sing, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to be this, it comes full circle back to our contribution, our offering, our sacrifice back to the whole. We honor who we are as individual, what we were born to be. There's certain desires, you know, just for me, Aries. And by honoring those born desires, even those carnal desires, that's how we all incarnate is via our carnal desires. We're here to taste, explore, get, get, experience. That's masculine. It's not a bad thing. It's not an evil thing. It's to be brought into balance. How much direction balanced with how much to let go? And how could I put it easily? It's not easy. All of us are getting tested in highly unique ways to bring this balance in a way that works. This is very much reflecting Pisces Virgo polarity. It's not only the sun today opposite to the moon in Pisces. It's going to be Mercury when Mercury stations in a couple of weeks opposite to Saturn. So it's very scrutinizing, critical. It's again, what are the parts and the pieces that we need? There's this lofty goal and it's mysterious and it's confusing and we cannot possibly know where it's going to end. That's the issue when it comes to Pisces is if we try to get to the finish line, like sign up for this church and you'll be saved. I'm pretty sure that's not the finish line. I'm pretty sure you don't just say, I, I accept Jesus as my Lord, as Savior, and then life ends, right? So, that's not exactly Pisces as exemplified by Jesus, right? Again, an eternal unfolding. So there is this, 
how can we position ourselves to receive that? How can we be conduits of that? And the parts and pieces, which includes our body, our diet, our schedule, our limitations. Do we have infinite energy? No. Are there particular things that annoy us? Yes. Are there things that sap our energy? Yes. Are there things that provide sustenance for our energy? Yes. This Mercury retrograde again is like this one over here, this one over here, sorting, 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 waste bin, treasure chest. What are we keeping? What are we throwing out? And it's getting hyper fucking detailed. It's like every single dimension and bit and piece can be very, very thoroughly productive because folks, it's going to be Mercury and Venus stationing direct at this around the same time, around the second week, first to second week of September, things are falling together. All of the uncertainty of August, like this giant soup of people, things, triggers, reactions. We've just completely changed everything. What you thought that you liked two months ago, do you, do you still like that? How about your relationships two months ago? Is it still looking and feeling the same? So we just went through a total and are still going through, we're not finished yet, a heart renewal, a heart cleansing, a heart sweeping out and processing. And it's a lot. It's a lot to process. My God. And these next few weeks, it's like after the atom bomb has been dropped and kicks up this huge mushroom cloud and where the fuck do I begin and they begin and what's in between and what it even is on the horizon, you know, that dust cloud starts to clear. And all that debris that was kicked up starts to trickle down, starts to take this new form, this new direction. Well, this is exciting and it can pay the bills, so we're going to do that. And, you know, we're both actually excited to do this thing together, so hey... Let's celebrate ourselves now in this new way. And, oh my God, we now have some new opportunities to bring into school for show and tell what we have had on the back burner for years, maybe even our whole life. That's what we're talking about right now. Mars rules the North Node in Aries, just went into Libra on the 27th, and it's going to remain there till October 12th. So now through mid-October is like a giant show and tell. Again, first half of September, we're getting clear. It's like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, workshops, job opportunities, collaborations, sexual liberations, creative liberations. Yes, we found it. We're excited. We feel special. We can't wait to bring it into school for show and tell. That's our green light. Do it, be it, go for it. It's coming together. You're going to have something new and exciting that you just discovered in your heart. You hold that out. There's going to be other people doing the same thing. And now we're starting to swap. What Mars and Libra wants to explore is others' value systems, not just our own. We want to merge with others. We want to get a sense of what it must be like to be in another person's shoes. That's what Libra does, especially Mars and Libra. It is an actual desire to explore the worlds of others. And there's tremendous opportunity now through October collaboration, initiation, New groups, new people, new projects. Bam, 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 bam. It's go time. It can be very exciting, very creative. There can be new people, new opportunities, new collaborations. If you're not already getting that sense, it's going to start getting clear as we're getting into September. And by the way, quick little aside, the astrology does not happen to us. Sometimes people say, oh, that didn't happen to me. I'm still waiting for it. We do have to apply a conscious effort here. Tuning into this divine dance is not the same as throwing yourself off a cliff and being, you know, having no, no spine. Saturn's the spine. Saturn's the skeleton. We're creating a spine and a skeleton that honors and respects the divine flow of life. All of these hyper feminine people, their emotions, I'm one of them, you know, it's changing every other day, chaos, unpredictability. I, I'll let you know. If you look at astrology, it's not chaotic. Even these most lunatic of people, because they're ruled by the moon, change a sign every two and a half days. Very predictable. Very predictable. My personal favorite case study is I just happened to choicelessly fall in love with some of the most chaotic, feminine, mysterious of women. Of course, you know, I'm an evolutionary astrologer devoted to Pluto and Scorpio and Neptune and Pisces. But it's like, even the most chaotic of things is all part of the divine dance. The astrology actually does have everything. Everything is reflected through the astrology. So there is an order. 
There is a structure to everything. And even when my folks get all excited about, oh, well, I'm not in a 3D time and I manifest these things, nonsense. Nonsense, my friends. The 3D time and the nonlinear time are connected. We bridge the two together. We dream, we bring into our heart, we anchor into our body, we envision, and then we create via the world that's around us. The natural resources that are there, ready to be harvested, worked with, to construct and build something in real time. This is about honoring real time as much as this is about honoring that which is outside of our control. This is about recognizing our capabilities, what we can build, where we can be an authority, where we can show up and prove to the world something different, something where the proof is in the pudding. As much as that can simultaneously be creative, loving, charitable, beautiful, musical, tasty. That's what happens when we bridge these worlds together. We're talking about the realm of artistry, musical genius, creativity, not just in the mundane sense, but also in a metaphorical sense that this is what all of life is. Every relationship is a dance. Every lifetime is a symphony. There are different seasons with different themes and different feels and we spiral and we unfold and we discharge and we get out and then we see it spiral and we see it unfold and that's what that was. I held this and then I took it out and I started to build a structure. I created the earth. I birthed the seed. I planted that seed. I got out of my own way. I watched that seed unfold into the beautiful creation it was meant to be. As much as it can be unpredictable, as much as it can be uncertain, as much as there are rugs being ripped out from under our feet, Uranus just stationed retrograde, just two days ago on the 28th. Uranus is so much happens at once, we don't even know what hit us. The future drops in and smacks us in the face before we even know what the future is. We don't even know that we're stepping into the future. Everything just doesn't make sense anymore. It's not congruent. It wasn't what it was. What the fuck is this? We don't know yet. That's why it takes time and experimentation, like breaking in a new pair of pants or a new pair of shoes. Uranus is like, what is that? Try it out. Play with it. So much at once, so much information, revelation, shocking, sudden changes. And it's pushing us somewhere. It's pushing us towards a creative rebirth. That is what's coming. If we're challenged right now, let's hold out for it. Let's hold out for ourself. Venus stationing direct is like, let's honor our heart, our values, our desires, our particular style, our particular taste. It's time to celebrate that. It's time to come out with that. Venus stations direct on the 10th cat's coming out of the bag. It's not about what other people think about it anymore. It's about you being you, radiating you. People can take it or leave it. If we can embrace that which I just said, there is so much on the horizon for us. Opportunities, blessings, things dropping from heaven. Venus will station square to Jupiter. And here's one of these beautiful signatures we see where Venus is going to station at the same time as asteroid Juno, the partnership asteroid, joins that Venus, then they move together through Leo, the forthcoming month of September. Very romantic, very collaborative. If we just had to knock some buildings down, it's to construct something that's new. If we just eliminated some people or changed some relational dynamics, there's new people. There's new ways of relating on the horizon. And this can be increasingly cohesive, more cohesive than how it's been before. The collaborative sense is really strong. We are on the same page and we don't have to be identical. It works that we're not identical. It works that you do this part, I do this part. You do this with this, these groups of friends. Then we come together and we do these things. Outsourcing, resourcing, in, out, in, out. Concentric circles. Different people satiating different parts of ourself. Very liberating time. Profound in the depth of what we can be processing, going back to generations of themes to do with justice, injustice, breaking the chains of restriction. Saturn in Pisces wants us to make our dreams and our fantasies real. 
Is Saturn going to test us, throw us obstacles, cause us to feel doubts, fears, insecurities in order to get there? Absolutely. This full moon is special because it is joined with Saturn. I'll let you know why this full moon is special. Again, for those who would also like to know why, the what of everything, please join my community. There is a free to join community where we have free meetings, opportunities to connect, share your healing process, collaborations. We invite artists, pioneers. This is a think tank as much as it is also an astrological educational resource. You can know why everything in your life is what it is for the purpose of your soul's evolution. If you can have that purpose of your soul validated and you can know that and hold out for that and understand that your life is creating all of your experiences for that, It's a whole nother level of support coming straight from nature, cosmos, and all of the beings that are out there to support us coming from God direct. That's what astrology is. It's not just another, uh, you know, car salesman type of uh, product that I'm selling here. So I do hope to see you in the Astro School. I hope to see you in the community. I'm excited to be connecting with you through the month of September 2023. And we will meet to discuss our forthcoming new moon in Virgo in just a couple weeks. As always, I am truly wishing the very best to your soul, your unfolding. May you conquer all these fears and insecurities. Like the boats rowing merrily down the stream. Continue to row. Sometimes it's got to be a row that we're powering through rapids. Sometimes those rapids lead us into a clear coast and we get to relax and kind of more so appreciate the clouds, appreciate being taken downstream, merrily, merrily, merrily honor the process and the full spectrum of life. That's what we're here to be and do as humans. It is beautiful when we embrace the full spectrum journey of life. Take care. Love y'all.